Now in our first level of understanding warping technology, we're going to discuss first the four main different ways beats, tones, texture, and complex can be used to match the current audio material. So let's start with this drums pattern here. And we can see down here that we've got some beats in place en enabling warp. And now we can see the markers falling into place. Let's listen to this. And let's turn the loop on. I'm playing again. Now if we match the wrong style, this is a beat based thing, but if I put it to like tones, we hear that it can't resynthesize or rechange this to the new tempo in a good way. If we go back to beats, we're doing much better. Again, back to tones. So the type of resynthesis or warping we're asking it to do does not help it match the beats more easily. It helps it warp it without the sound being noticeable. Let's go down here now to arpeggiator. You can see we've got some broken up parts and then some sustained parts. Let's listen to that. Now currently this is set to tones because it does have kind of sustained sound to it. But let's put it now to beats and listen. You can hear bumpiness coming in. Let's go now to texture. And we hear a sort of weird tunnel-like effect on the sound. Which is not bad, but it's just not accurate recreation. So that's for arpeggiators based on a sound that has a steady sound. Again, that would be good for tones. In synthesizer pad sounds, this next one, are a bit more complex. And they have interweaving phase cancellations, etc. often, or sometimes some effects added. So texture is great for figuring these out. Let's listen to this. Now switching that to the beats mode. Now our tempo is the same. Let's go ahead and change this tempo. Now as soon as it has to resynthesize it, because we changed the tempo so it doesn't match, now we can hear it. The texture is doing a great job. Now sometimes with texture it's making its best get, but you can fine tune some of these other parameters down here, the actual size of the little grains that it's trying to use, and some fluctuation factor there, some flux. So you can fine tune these and see how they work for you. And then finally we have the complete mixture of a song and let's just listen to this. Let's go beats and change the tempo again. We hear some bumpiness. Let's go to tones. Very bad. Let's come down to complex. So bear in mind now that we're, we're doing complex on this waveform. We've got bass, we've got guitar, we've got some couple of drum tracks with some percussion, and here we have a vocal. So this complex formula is trying to take into consideration any type of format of audio that might be in here combined together. Okay, so that's a quick explanation of the different modes for the warping technology. Let's move on now to actually talking about the warp markers. Now I'm going to be looking at this one here which says help me because the timing is not very good. Let's zoom in and see what I mean. I'm pulling over. Here's where the first subdivision should be according to the audio. If I double click and pull this over, I've told Ableton Live that they should adjust the timing between this one and that one so it takes exactly one sixteenth note. And we can continue on as needed. If you see they're close, this one's close enough I'm not going to worry about, I can ignore it. Again, to activate one of these warp markers, simply double click, it turns yellow, then you can click and hold and move it into place. 
Now this one's a little bit late, but I know that by pulling this one forward, it's going to squeeze that one forward also. So we're pretty close there. I'm going to leave that go. Same thing again. We've got several in a row that are a little bit after the beat. I'll pull this back. Double click. Hold. And now when Ableton Live plays this back, it will adjust the playback of every fragment to match exactly to the song. So even though this was originally not done very well, it's played unevenly, and it's audio, I can still correct the timing by using warp markers. And let's go ahead and finish this first measure. We'll listen to that. Pretty close. Pulling this one over, and our last one back. Say now, we'll listen to the first part of this. We can see here we've got four beats that have been corrected and the other ones that have not. I'm going to turn on the metronome so we can hear this and launch the clip. So we can hear this is almost machine like. Be sloppy over here. So you can improve the timing of an existing clip using your warp markers like we've done in the first part of this. You can do this to any type of material, whether it is uh, a drum beat or not. And again, turning on your metronome will help you discern whether the clip really is lining up well. Okay, we'll stop here.